Hi everyone, it's Wandering Lynn, and I have a video to talk about Let's Make Art. I saw this advertised, I think on Instagram, and it is um, a subscription box to do watercolor art, and I thought, neat. So I didn't subscribe for the subscription box. But I went ahead and did some, you can order just one-offs, just one design. I thought I'd give it a try, and if I like it, then I'm going to subscribe. So let's dive right into what I ordered. So I ordered because I, while I have a lot of art supplies... I don't really have watercolor supplies, so I did order um, some brushes, which is right here. Oh, well, isn't that cute? A Henry, I mean Henry Matisse uh, reincarnated. <laughs> um, so I did order brushes and this. Um, is the butcher tray for the pet, it's a pal paint palette basically for watercolors. And as you can see, it's metal. These are the sheets I ordered. I ordered Sunset Mountains and Rainbow Elephants. As you can see, there's a step-by-step -step sheet in them. And she also does uh, video tutorials on YouTube. But here is her Instagram and Facebook page. Okay, so let's open these up. So I keep saying she... And Let's Make Art is a team. Sarah is the one that does the watercolor tutorials. They also offer hand lettering, and that those tutorials are done by Nicole. Because I've recently taken calligraphy classes, that's why I opted to go with the watercolor kits. Um, plus, the colors are really pretty on these. So, here's what comes in a kit. Um, you get these step-by-step -step directions, so you actually can go onto their website and find your project, and that will take you to the tutorial. Um, includes the supplies, so they have a, a standard a standard one and a live paint along tutorial. But since this was part of the subscription from a couple months ago, obviously the live tutorial is is just now recorded. On the front, then you can see um, this was the step-by-step. -step. And at the bottom, it tells you that you need the round number six brush, the round number two brush, and uh, five, four colors, Norway blue, cherry red, daffodil yellow, and black. So that will be in one of these paint packs. Then you also get um, a small version of the card um, showing the final design. And the kit also comes with two pieces of watercolor paper. Um, as you can see, watercolor paper is, um, is a little bit thicker than normal paper. It also has a texture to it. There is a variety of different types of watercolor paper. They come hot press, cold press, um, some different fibers that go into making it. It's, it's really a preference. Most watercolor papers will be uh, white or cream. That's because they show the, the color better. And then I'm assuming this is... Um, this is a piece of uh, carbon because I believe, if I remember correctly from um, what I saw online, is you use that to help transfer the design. So, I'm going to get started. Um, as you can see, my, some of my other supplies that I have is my drawing board, which got a little warped on the move. Um, you also need some kind of, of tape. This is just regular, this is drafting tape, but it's like masking tape to tape down. As you can see, she's got hers taped down with fancy tape um, to tape down your paper so it doesn't move as you're, as you're working. Um, I also always keep newsprint around. Newsprint is great. It's cheap. As you can see, it's, it's newsprint, but it's, it's a great to, to layer under stuff um, and make. And then, just in case, I have the rest of my art supplies. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and check back in a few, a little bit and see how I'm doing. Okay, so I don't know how well this comes out because I tried to be really light. But I used my graphite paper. Um, you just put it 
you know, the dark side face down on your watercolor paper, then put your pattern over it. And just with a pencil, um, she also says you could use a felt tip pen. You just trace over the design really lightly. Um, you want to be really light because watercolor is transparent. So you will see lines if they're, they're too dark. So this is, uh, this is step one. She doesn't really go over this. She talks about it in the video, but she doesn't really go over it. So again, what I've done is I've just taped down the paper so it doesn't move. Um, you just lay your graphite paper. Again, the black side goes down, face down. Um, it doesn't really matter if it lines up perfectly. What you want to make sure is that your this paper lines up with your watercolor sheet underneath. So then you just line it up and then you just take your pencil and trace. It is that easy. And then you have a nice, uh, nice design. So next step is I am currently got the video up and I'm going to be following along with my paints and try to see what kind of elephant I make. Stay tuned. Okay, so I finished step one, and basically that was just uh, taking the blue watercolor color paint and doing a wash. So when you put the color out on the palette, it's pretty dark and concentrated. What you do is you dip your brush into the water um, and then take some paint and then even re-dip it back in the water. As you can see, my water is already kind of turning blue. If it's still darker than you want it, when it goes on the paper, then just dip your brush back in the water. Um, I, I didn't feel like she gave a good explanation of that, but maybe people who have watched her videos a lot and do subscribe already know that. But I think if you're coming into it new, you don't necessarily know that. She does kind of show her palette off to the side, and as you can see right here, that's her palette. It's very watery so that's what you're doing to get the wash color because when you um, I'm going to show you on this piece if you just do the color straight it's quite dark so as a comparison see how dark it is when you don't water it out so to get the wash you have to use more water as you can see mine's a little uneven but that's kind of the fun of watercolors um, and as we fill in the details, it will get better. So as you can see, the next step is then to add some shadow to make give our elephant some depth. Um, she started on the her step-by-step -step with the shadows, but on the video, she started with the wash. So I follow, was following her video and did the wash. Um, she goes very fast on the video. I will say I've had to pause it several times. Um, she's already moving on to the next step, which is um, then to add the color bits. As you can see on the elephant, then he gets some a little red and a little yellow to even add more dimension. I am gonna stop right here for now and let mine dry and then work on my shadows some more because I'm really not happy with the way they've turned out. I really need to do some more. As you can see from hers, she's really got a lot of a lot of depth and a lot of blending on hers. Of course, she is an expert in watercolors, so I'm st still learning. So this is my first project. Luckily, there's a second sheet of watercolor paper. So we will call this uh, trial one, and then we can always try it again. Before I wrap up part one, I'm gonna just show you a few other things. I'm just using a jar that had, I don't know, jam or jelly or something in it. I washed it out. It comes with a lid, so that's perfect. That way you don't have to worry about your water getting sloshed around. Um, another thing you're gonna need is paper towels or some kind of old towel. This is just an old towel that you don't care getting paint all over it. That's essential because you'll need to wash off your brushes every once in a while, just dab them. You just dab them dry because they will get a lot of water and paint on it. Um, the other thing is if you have, you can get lids for these so the paint doesn't dry out. I only added a couple drops of each color 
Um, and as you can see, I blended the black with the blue to do the, to do the darker colors. Um, so it's not a big deal if it dries out because I still have um, plenty of paint left. They come in these little squeeze bottles. So there's plenty of paint left. I just put out a drop or two of each. So that's all for the first video so far. Not too bad. Um, it's pretty easy. Again, right now, since this is my first project, I thought the video was going pretty fast. And I'm not sure she covered all the steps that a true beginner would need. It's not hard to catch up. Um, I think this is really helpful. This was really nice to have beside me. It made it a lot easier to see what she was talking about. Again, she started with the shadows on this this step. I probably wouldn't just because, again, I would do the blend out. I think she was right in the video to do the blend out first and then go in and do the, the shadows. So, I'm going to wrap up this part and tune back next time for part two to see how my elephant turns out. Thanks for watching.